So hematology, let's start with blood cell development. So all the cells in our blood, that's red blood cells, platelets, white blood cells, these are derived from what we call multipotent hematopoietic stem cells. These are located in the bone marrow. These are stem cells. When we say multipotent, that means they have potential to be multiple cells, different cells. So they have potential to become red blood cells, platelets, white blood cells, etc. Now these multipotent hematopoietic stem cells can divide either into common myeloid progenitors or common lymphoid progenitors. And we're going to focus on the common myeloid progenitors for a second and see what they end up progenerating, um, be becoming. These can become megakaryocytes, which become thrombocytes, which become platelets. Or you have erythrocytes, which will, what, what would that become? Erythrocytes turn into red blood cells. And then we have mast cells and myoblasts. Okay, and then the myoblasts themselves turn in other cells of our immune system, so basophils, neutrophils, eosinophils, and the monocytes become macrophages. So these all come from the common myeloid progenitors. Platelets from megakaryocytes, so that's something you all, you want to remember, you'll, you'll, you'll uh, hear about that later. Red blood cells from erythrocytes, you get mast cells, and then from the myoblasts you get all these basophils, neutrophils, eosinophils, macrophages. Now let's turn our attention to com common lymphoid progenitors. So if, if you tell from the name lymphoid, so you get lymphocytes here. So what you can get here are natural killer cells. These are large granular lymphocytes, or you can get so, or you can get smaller lymphocytes. So either a T cell or a B cell. Remember the B cell becomes a plasma cell when it's activated. So the lymphocytes, specifically T cells, B cells from small lymphocytes, and then natural killer cells, which are the larger lymphocytes. Those are from the common lymphoid progenitors. This is our blood cell development. Now, let's go into blood groups now. All our red blood cells have, can have different blood groups. You, I'm sure you know already about this. But what it means is, like you know if you're type A, type B, type AB. What it means when you're type A is your red blood cells have this type A antigen on them. Type B then is they have type B antigen. Type AB means they have both type A and type B antigen on top. And then type O means they have no antigens on the red blood cell. And this is important because early in life we get exposed to bacteria that have very similar antigens to those found in red blood cells. So we're going to have bacteria, say a little bacteria here, with a type, an antigen that looks like type A, an antigen that looks like type B. And so your, our body, we're going, to see, we're going to see that bacteria, and if what we're going to do is we're going to make antibodies against those bacteria antigens as you would expect them to do, unless we have a similar antigen on the red blood cell. So let's say we're type A, we're a type A person. We're going to see this antigen, but this antigen looks exactly like the, like the antigen we see on a red blood cell. So we're going to see that as a, as a similar. We're going, to, we're going to see it as self. And, and against antigen that we see as self, we don't make antibodies, so no antibodies here. We're, the type A person also looks at this type B antigen, type B-like antigen on the bacteria, and it's going to see that as foreign because our, this type A person does not have a type B antigen on the red blood cell. So now they're going to make antibodies against it. We make antibodies against this type B uh, type B antigen. So, what are we going to see? It's people with type A blood. They're going to have type B antibodies in their blood. Now, this is for everybody. Everybody gets exposed to these bacteria with antigens. So, what 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 will type B have? Will they have any antibodies? And what type? So, these guys are going to have type A antibodies because they saw B as self, so they're not going to make antibodies against that. But they're going to see A as foreign, make um, antibodies. Type AB, what's going to happen? What antibodies will they have? Type AB will not have any antibodies at all because they see type A as self, they see type B as self on the bacteria. This is self, this is self, so no antibodies. Type O, they're going to see, they're going to have antibodies against both A and B. Now, we care about this in blood transfusions. Why do we care about this? Because you don't want to give blood that has an antibody that the patient has antibodies against because if if this patient gets type a, type B blood, these antibodies are going to go attack that type B blood with type B. They're going to attack it, and they're going to destroy it. They're going to cause, it's going to cause problems. So you don't want that. So what kind of blood can a person with type A with type A red blood cells get? What kind of blood can this person get? This person can eat, basically what right? They can't get any blood that has type B on it. So type A doesn't have type B blood on it. It doesn't have B antigens on it. Uh, type O doesn't have B antigen on it, so they can get type A or type O. Type B people, again, the logic would be that they have anti they have antibodies against type A, so you don't want to give them blood with type A antigens. So you can give them type B blood or you can give them type O. Type AB blood, they have no, anti they have no antibodies developed, 
So you can give them anything. So this is the universal recipient because these patients don't have any antibodies, so they can receive any type of blood. Now type O, they have both type A and type B antibodies. Antibodies. So you can't give them any of any red blood cells with either of those antigens. So the only thing they can take is type O and type O blood. And type O is the universal donor. As you can see, these guys type O blood doesn't have any antigens on it. So even if a patient has all these antibodies, even if this patient has type A antibody, type B antibody, you give them type O blood, there's nothing to attack. So you can give them type O blood, type O is the universal donor, type AB is the universal recipient. So that's it for our AB groups. Now we're going to talk about the RH factor. So remember we, we said that um, red blood cells can have this A antigen, B antigen. They also can have this RH factor. So you can either have it or you don't. If you have it, you're RH positive. If you don't, you're RH negative. Okay. Um, now this is important during pregnancy. And basically, this isn't like the type AB blood where you get exposed to bacteria with it and so you de everybody develops antibodies. If you are type RH negative, you're not going to have antibodies unless you get exposed to type R plus, RH plus blood. And this happens in pregnancy. What happens is if you have an RH mo mother and you have an RH positive fetus, now you can get blood from the fetus to the mother, mother in certain situations. For example, during delivery, when the placenta dis detaches, during miscarriages or abortions, or when, when we do invasive prenatal testing, we take, take a needle, put it into the, into the uterus. Uh, you can get contact of blood, you can get blood going from the fetus to the mother. And so now you're going to have this type RH blood, this blood with RH antigen, RH factor. It's going to go into the bloodstream of the mother, and she's going to see that RH factor and she's going to make antibodies again. So you're going to have these lymphocytes. They're going to see that as foreign. They're going to make these antibodies. Okay. They're going to make antibodies against RH positive, RH factor. Now what's going to happen? This is not going to be a problem during the current pregnancy. Because it's going to be, they're going to, it takes time to make antibodies. It takes, it takes them, by the time that there's antibodies, the mother will have delivered the baby. But this is going to be relevant in a future pregnancy. So pregnancy, this is pregnancy one, pregnancy number one. Now, if, if they have a, if the mother has a second pregnancy, and now she has developed antibodies, now she has antibodies in her bloodstream already. She, antibodies against this RH factor. If she gets another baby that's RH positive, and we know she's still RH negative, these antibodies are going to be able to cross the placenta, and they're going to be able to attack the baby. This is the little, let's say this little baby here, baby, with his head. Okay, she's in the in the belly. These antibodies are going to cross the placenta and attack the baby. Attack the baby's red blood cells, which have the Rh factor. And they're going to destroy the fetal red blood cells. So that's going to be a problem. We're going to talk about how that, how that presents. So that's how you can get problems with Rh factor. And the way we prevent this in the first place, if is if we know this this mother is Rh negative, we know she has if we know she has Rh positive fetus, what we can do is we can give the mother these uh, anti-D immunoglobulins. What these, we want to give the mother anti, give, them, give her anti-globulins. And these globulins, anti-D is basically targeting Rh too, Rh as well. So we give her these anti, and these antibodies, these immunoglobulins. They're going to bind to this Rh factor in, if, if it does, if the, the fetus's blood does cross the placenta, does cross into the mother. They're going to bind to the Rh factor and so these guys aren't going to bind. There's, they're not going to recognize there's no the mother's not going to recognize the Rh factor because it's already bound by these antibodies. So the mother's not going to make any antibodies herself. So there's not going to be antibodies in her bloodstream, and so she's not going to have problems in future pregnancy. So that is it for the Rh factor. Now we're going to see what happens if we get problems. So let's say the mother does have preformed antibodies, and they cross the placenta, they attack the fetal red blood cells, and so what's going to happen is you're going to get symptoms from anemia and from excess bilirubin. Remember we said that um, destruction of the red blood cells is going to lead to a breakdown of the components of red blood cells. You're going to get Eventually you're going to get bilirubin. And so what's going to happen is excess bilirubin is going to cause jaundice and conictivus. It's bilirubin is deposition in the skin and deposition in the brain respectively. And that can cause a lot of problems. The other thing you can get is hydrops fatalis. So 
high drops is kind of it's like wet like drops of fluid and what happens what it is is you get edema in multiple organ spaces of the body of the baby and this happens because the fetal heart is going to be working harder to compensate for low blood because they're going to have hemolysis their blood cells are going to die they're not going to have enough blood so the heart's going to have to work harder to get blood, to oxygen oxygen to the rest of their cells and eventually the heart's going to fail you're going to get back up of blood, you're going to get back up of fluid, build up of fluid in multiple organ, uh, organ spaces in the body, and that's defined as hydrops fatalis. Now, how do we treat this? I just I already told you how do we treat this. What do we do? We give the mother anti-D immunoglobulins. Remember, anti -D, anti, the D is basically Rh factor. So you give them anti-D immunoglobulins during the tr third trimester in the early postpartum period because that's when you can get that blood from the fetus to the mother. Remember, what does it do? And this immunoglobulin binds to the to the Rh factor. And we have that immunoglobulin. Let's draw that. We give this immunoglobulin. It binds to the Rh factor. The mother will not be able to recognize that anymore because it's already bound by antibodies. She's not going to make antibodies against Rh, so she's not going to have problems in future pregnancy. So that's how we prevent Rh hemolytic disease of the newborn. Now, if we go to ABO hemolytic disease in the newborn, this is what happens when the mother who has preformed antibodies against A or B antigens, it could be either depending on the mother's blood type, if they cross the placenta and attack fetal red blood, red blood cells, if they have the corresponding antigen. And what's, again, you get the same thing. You get anemia and excess bilirubin. It's due to red blood cell hemolysis. Uh, what happens is basically a milder version of RH hemolytic disease. You get mild jaundice within 24 hours of birth. So it's going to be less severe than RH hemolytic disease. I want to emphasize this within 24 hours of birth because kids, babies in general can get jaundice, but what, but it take, usually takes over 24 hours. If you have it within 24 hours, that means you're getting, have, you're getting hemolysis of red blood cells. It's going to present with jaundice due to, what did we say? We said it was due to bilirubin deposition in the skin. And how do we treat this? If you watch the jaundice lectures in the GI system, you would know the answer to this. If you didn't, the answer is you can either do phototherapy or exchange transfusion. And what does phototherapy do? Basically, you shine this UV light in the baby, and this light turns their unconjugated bilirubin. So this bilirubin is unconjugated. It's water insoluble. It's, so that means it's not, it's not soluble in blood. It makes it soluble so it can be excreted in the urine. So then the baby can pee it out after you give them phototherapy. The other thing you can do is you do exchange transfusion. What it means is, I mean, you pretty much tell, you can tell what it means from the name. You exchange the bloods, you remove blood from the newborn, and you replace it with new, normal blood. That's the exchange and the transfusion part. So you remove the, the blood with all those excess bilirubin. You remove the blood with the maternal antibodies, which were causing the problem. And you, re, you give the baby back some normal blood. And that's how you solve the problem of ABO hemolytic disease of the newborn phototherapy or exchange transfusion. So that's it for our review of blood cell development as well as the blood groups, the ABO blood groups and the RH blood groups.